Welcome to a highly anticipated new episode of In Touch with Steve Cherundolo. There's the aforementioned Steve Cherundolo. How, how are things? Uh, things are busy, but we're well. I got to tell you also, because we had uh, Eldon Yakubovich on the uh, the podcast, and he was a little upset that he wasn't getting that L.A. weather out here. I think we're, it's summer starting to come into view. It's back. It's uh, yesterday, back. Uh, Mother's Day, I um, was out on the beach. It was packed. felt like summertime. Summer has arrived. Nice. Look at that. Are you sleeping? Are you getting eight hours? What, what's going on? What, no, I've never been a big sleeper. Eight hours. Probably the last time I got eight hours was in college um, or high school. Um, to be honest, I can't remember that far back. Yeah. So, no, I'm less sometimes is more. <laughs> I'm just sitting here because I'm like, I'm a six, seven hour guy. But tend to, I can slip an eight hour on occasion. But then again, uh, I'm probably not the coach of a very successful LAFC squad, which is uh, you're coming off a nice win over Salt Lake. And it's been a while since we've, we've talked about it. I want to kind of go through what's been going. Let's let's start with uh, the MLS play. Uh, a very impressive road a road win, but managing all these games and there's there's a little light at the end of the tunnel, but uh, you still be very busy as you have three competitions coming up. Yeah, it's it's really busy, and um, and I've said it before. We've talked about it in the past. I I really believe, and um, we are better when we focus on the next task at hand. And uh, we're trying to create these micro cycles to do that, and obviously to keep an eye on the players' uh, physical um, readiness, um, as we like to put it, and their loading, to make sure that they are in a spot to perform and stay healthy. Um, so far, it's been pretty good. Uh, we have had some injuries, but I think those are inevitable with a schedule like this and uh, with the roster size we have. So I think we've done pretty well, um, but we're not happy yet. We still have a little work to do. Let's go over some of the competitions. I got to start with the Open Cup because the, it was an opportunity for the LAFC two kids to go in there. I saw you on the sidelines. Certainly after the game, you're in good spirits, but you were really getting into it. This was a great coaching moment. These kids, I'm sure, were thrilled that, uh, notwithstanding Eldon, who's out there, and Danny, but the kids were thrilled certainly to get that kind of attention. When you look at your coaching career, and certainly in this first season, you look at that opportunity to do that, regardless of the results. Um, is there anything different from you when you, you approach that game? Sure. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my, my time as a uh, youth developmental coach. Um, loved it. I loved my time uh, with the Las Vegas Lights, which was our kind of second team at LAFC at that point. Working with players who are not um, finished with their development, who are not seasoned vets yet, um, is very gratifying and is a lot of fun. And then to prepare players for a couple days, as we had two days with the boys, and then uh, present them with a match plan, give them the necessary tools they need, and to see them implement that pretty much to perfection uh, really got me going, it got me excited, and got me super engaged. And um, yeah, I was locked in for the 120 minutes NPK shootout. So just very proud of the boys. Some of the players got uh, didn't have to travel for that. The coaches weren't up there and it was an incredible uh, achievement. A lot of folks didn't give that, that crew an opportunity. They got the result, they moved to the round of 16. I was curious about your reaction when you saw the draw. Uh, what were your thoughts? Um, there was no reaction because I knew it just had to be. So um, our only concern was, did we get a home game or an away game? I think this team and this group has traveled enough uh, so far this season. And uh, to have another home game is, uh, is what we were looking for. And uh, it had to be the Galaxy. Of course it did. Of course. And that's kind of come up. And uh, again, the schedule's busy. But you look at it, I think there's five games in the next three weeks four of them are at home so that has to be uh, for a coaching staff has to be a big relief not only because you don't have to jump on an airplane but you get to kind of get more of a routine for coach, uh, coaching during the week yeah everybody sleeps better at home um, than in hotels um, except me maybe uh, uh, <laughs> no I'm just kidding uh, being home is special we uh, we had an opportunity or um, we made it into an opportunity to spend another night at home against before Real Salt Lake I do think this team plays very well at home they prefer that schedule they prefer the comfort of their own four walls, so uh, we're, we're happy to have this stretch at home. I know we're, we're, it's a little further down the, the pike here, but the CONCACAF Champions League, your one trip in those five games is going to be to Leon, Mexico, navigating through a tournament. How did it go in your perception? Now you have the final, obviously having to get through three opponents, very different teams in each case. When you look at the body of work, uh, what was the, those keys that allowed you to get through to this, this final match? Well, I think when you look at the tournament, it's, it's pretty daunting when you see all the travel, the games and the schedule, potential finals sometime in June. Um, it's really hard to think that far ahead. And so you, you kind of begin the, the tournament um, and look at it as sort of an adventure and a journey. And your first trip was to Costa Rica. 
and um, that went well. And then you come home and you want to close the door and, and advance to the next round. And then you're off to uh, to Vancouver, which is another MLS team. So it's it, one thing kind of went after another. And we made each uh, level in this journey or step, um, I think, about that interesting step or level. And, um, and, and sort of cherishing the journey. And I think that's kind of been how we've approached it. And I would do the exact same thing again. I would. I would concur obviously it's gone very well so we'll put that in the back here i did want to talk about we always have a theme and i mentioned one i think a couple shows ago about hitting the road let's talk about being at home the creature comforts of being at home let's start with the chirundalo home when you you finished a road trip what's the one thing you look forward to the most i love the normal stuff i love being there for um obviously my family for my kids and for mandy and um, if i get to make their lunches or take them to school or pick them up from school I would love to do that, and I love doing that. I prefer picking kids up because that usually means a little bit of ice cream afterwards. Um, <laughs> of course, but of course, right? For you, um, <laughs> yes, mostly for me. Uh, and so, yeah, I just love the normalcy of, of our little family and life. Um, those are the things I enjoy mostly about home, and obviously, then spending time uh, with Mandy. Going to BMO Stadium. What are the? What's that one thing? You park the car. You walk at the stadium. What's the one thing you look forward to? Well, we've been able to, we've been fortunate to do it a lot. Um, after the game, celebrating with everybody at the organization, including families and kids, um, is something that um, I find very important in a, in a successful organization. It's something we've said from day one we want, and we've welcomed with open arms. And uh, fortunately, like I said, we've been able to do it a lot, and I'm looking forward to that again. When you go home to San Diego, what's the first thing on your list to do when you're back home there? That would be uh, obviously visiting family, but the real answer is uh, Roberto's, and I get my carne asada burrito. Roberto's? Yeah. Uh, we got a... Carmel Valley Road, Toy Pines. <laughs> Roberto's going to have a big line there uh, tomorrow morning. To they get, already or do. Tomorrow after, they already <laughs> do. I got to go check it out. I don't get to San Diego enough, which yeah, is a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's criminal because it's considering where I live. I need to apologize to the city of San Diego. There's more to San Diego than a burrito. Of course, but anything you're, when you get home, you're you're streaming, you're, you enjoy watching on the, on the tube. Uh, no, I'm honestly. Um, Need any suggestions? Yes, I would. Yeah. That'd okay. Be great. I actually saw this one. I was on HBO Max. It was called Chicken Without the Head. It's a Spanish <gasps> soccer show uh, about an agent. He's an a, a sports agent who's fallen on hard times. I just started streaming three shows. The first three episodes it was pretty good. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay. All right. And it's soccer related. Yeah. So Steve, we got some things on your plate. Enjoy uh, the time at home. Enjoy the ice cream and that carne asada burrito when you ever get that chance. And thanks for joining us here on another cracking episode of In Touch with Steve Trudeau.